Science and religion have been at each other's throat since, well, the Dark Ages. But over the past few years, scientists have become more religious. Not that they believe in God. Science isn't really a belief. It's an observation to describe something. But more and more, people are beginning to use science as a belief form, which isn't too smart, because science, quite frankly, gets it wrong a lot. Science changes its mind all the time. So this week it's been announced that there is a new planet in town. It's in Alpha Centauri, a neighborhood about 4.7 light years away. There's a red dwarf in that three star system called Proxima, Proxima Centauri. So they named the planet Proxima B that orbits the red dwarf planet. I guess they named it Proxima B because they have no creativity whatsoever. Proxima B, really? That's it? That's all you got? Proxima B? I mean, you could have named it Bob or Sue or Jill or you could have named it George Lucas, but Proxima B? Boring. Man, scientists need better marketing. NASA released a statement that basically there was a 99% chance that there was an earthquake going to hit Southern California. I'll take those odds. Those are pretty good odds. 99%? That means there's definitely going to be an earthquake in California. You know, if I was in the prediction game, I would also predict one in California. I mean, it is California. They're kind of known for earthquakes. And there's been a lot of movies about earthquakes in California. So why not make a prediction? 99.9%. .9%. I love science. But there seems to be a gap now that I've never seen, at least not in the way that I see it now. Maybe some of us are just naive or have been naive when it comes to science versus religion. But anymore, one can't choose to have faith in God and believe in science. It's becoming polarized. You either believe one thing or the other. Science and religion, and they've been at each other's throat since the beginning. By definition, it makes sense that the two don't necessarily agree. After all, the Bible says it is a fool who doesn't believe in God, and scientists are all about knowledge, and if most scientists consider themselves agnostic or atheist, then by definition, the Bible does look at them as a fool. But scientists, they'll argue that if you can't measure something, and you can't see it, and you can't observe it, it's not there. Science uses the scientific method. Now, the scientific method has evolved over thousands of years, and it kind of means different things to different people and different scientists in different fields. Form a hypothesis. That means you form a statement about what you are, are, are observing. You test your hypothesis, and of course, there's more observation along the way each and every time. You come up with an experiment to be able to predict uh, what you're observing and its behavior to create a theory. Now, I've butchered that to pieces. Forming an idea, testing it, observing it again and again, and testing it and observing it again and again. Easiest things to identify with when you think about testing a hypothesis is gravity. And gravity seems to be a no-brainer here on Earth. What goes up must come down. Before Einstein, that was pretty easy. A Newtonian physics was pretty easy to understand. Uh, it's pretty easy mathematically, but then Einstein came around and blew our minds with something else about gravity, something different about gravity. Now, that's not for this particular episode of A Nose for Life. Only to mention that theories and hypotheses, they change. When people make new discoveries, when people have new understandings, those ideas change. It's proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that when you observe something, the behavior of whatever it is you're observing changes. Observation changes the outcome of the experiment. I'll give you an example. It's one thing to talk about the behavior of deer, and I love studying deer, I love studying bear, and anything in the woods. But when you begin to observe them in nature, their behavior is altered because they know you're there, and it changes their behavior. When you observe something, you change the normal conditions and the environment of what's being observed, and that alters the behavior all the way down to the molecular level. Everybody talks about Galileo and how he was persecuted for his discoveries because the church, it didn't line up with the church's teaching. And it sort of makes science out to be a victim, a victim of religious persecution. And maybe so. Maybe early on and for several hundred years, that was the case. And I would argue this much too. There's a lot of people that are misinformed. 
about biblical scripture and argue things against science that they shouldn't. That's just my opinion though. That's commentary. But the truth of the matter, science now has their own evangelist. So how has science become like a religion? Well, there's a lot of ways. First, right now, if you don't believe what mainstream science believes, you're not in the club. You're considered ignorant. I like to call this exclusivity. You either believe this way or you're ignorant. You're wrong. It's very religious. They even have their own versions of Armageddon. And in fact, they create the tools to cause it. And don't ever be fooled. Science has denominations. How man spread throughout the planet and you're gonna get 50 different opinions. I look at that as sort of like denominationalism. And whichever opinion you buy into, that's sort of your denomination within science. Making science kind of religious. Just because we say science says doesn't mean all scientists agree. In fact, science is so diverse and denominationalized the very rocks behind me are controversial here in the Cumberland Plateau. As you look at 50,000 different resources, and again, I'm exaggerating slightly, and they all have a different reason as to why these type of rocks are on this particular mountain. Good old denominations. I'm assuming you got your Baptist scientists, your Pentecostal scientists. That's probably strength theory, people. But you got your Pentecostal scientists, your Baptist scientists, your Catholic scientists. All right, let's get this out of the way. Global warming. Let's just go ahead and get it out there. It's summertime, it's hot, it's warm. That's all I'm gonna say about global warming. Here's what I do know, is that the same colleges and universities that trained the people to create all of the equipment and machines and things that cause, allegedly cause or cause whatever you believe, global warming, are the same institutions that claim that the earth is getting warmer. Did they have different professors or advisors? I mean, how did that happen? It's weird. Another way science is religious, it's influenced by money. Yeah, money influences science. In fact, if you don't play the right game and you're a scientist, you get the, uh, the door shut on you, or the gate, when you don't play along and you don't get funded. So your research has to sometimes come to the right conclusions or you're out of the game. How religious. Often we're told that science is objective, fact, and truth. And I wish that were the case, but it just isn't, at least not all the time. Scientific research costs money, and money comes from people. It either comes from you as a taxpayer with government research, or it comes from private individuals or companies or corporations. Either way, that money carries with it an agenda and the agenda influences the science. Science though is great because it makes things easier. It, science makes things fun. Science makes things explainable most of the time. Uh, science gives us air conditioning. Like right now here in the southeastern Tennessee heat, I'm like sweating and it's hot and I keep tallying off not to be all gross on camera. But the truth is, is it's very hot. So I'm gonna really look forward to going home and getting an air conditioner and and then sucking up all the air conditioner and opening the refrigerator and getting me a nice Coke out of the refrigerator and having a good drink. That's gonna be great. That's a non-alcoholic drink for all the church people out there. But seriously, science makes things wonderful. Science is how we have a car that drives us where we're going to and from. Science is how we have airplanes. Science is how we can go to space and have satellites and have YouTube and Wi-Fi and all these amazing things. But science isn't morally objective. Science and business are related. So science isn't truly objective thought at all. Science has motivations. Let's just say, for example, because this happens, that a preacher, a Christian preacher, says there was a 99.9% .9 chance that an earthquake would hit Los Angeles in the next two years. When two years passed, everybody in the world would call that preacher a liar, a false prophet, and they would say all kinds, everybody would be saying mean stuff about the preacher. It says a false prophet, we need to stone him, he needs not to be preaching and shut up and all kinds of bad stuff. But when science makes a mistake, we let him off the hook. Maybe it's the air conditioning. Maybe it's how comfortable science makes us. But when science gets it wrong, and they do get it wrong, a lot, and they don't always make the best decisions with their discoveries. When science gets it wrong, we look the other way. 
Scientists have evangelists now. My personal favorite is Brian Green. I think he's pretty awesome. And then there's the guy, I can't ever pronounce his name. Yeah, him, that guy. What's his name again? That guy, they're awesome to watch. And then of course there's him. Neil deGrasse Tyson is another one of my favorites. Uh, he's very enjoyable to watch, but he's antagonistic to Christianity. Uh, he's rather hateful about it. I always think maybe some professing Christian may have beat him up when he was younger in school or something. I don't know. But he makes statements that, have, you know, you can believe whatever you want to believe as long as you don't affect uh, government policy. Sorry, buddy, but it just doesn't work that way in a democracy. We don't live in a scientocracy. where science gets to dominate the narrative all the time. And why? Because you guys are wrong so much. There are seven planets in the solar system. There are seven planets in the solar system. No, no, there are eight planets in our solar system. Okay, seriously, there's nine planets, nine. I've learned this all the way through elementary school, junior high school, and high school. Trust me, there are nine planets. I'm positive about this. Wait, Pluto's not a planet? Who said that? Mike who? Mike Brown? Who's Mike Brown? No, seriously, Pluto has been declassified. It's no longer a planet because Mike Brown said that it had too many things in, in common with other objects in, a, in the Cooper Belt. Uh, so there are only eight planets in our solar system now seriously except except that there are actually now nine planets again uh, according to astronomers and Mike Brown another planet in the solar system a an official ninth planet that would meet all the qualifications but it has a different orbital pattern and therefore we can't see it whatever man I mean look I'm okay with believing things without evidence I'm a Christian I don't need evidence even though there's plenty of evidence that there was a person by the name of Jesus Christ that walked on the planet and that he was crucified and over 500 eyewitnesses that he rose again. I don't need that proof. I have faith. No matter how many goofy studies you read about on the internet or no matter how many scientific breakthroughs you may hear about, they all end up proving pretty silly when it comes to what happens when it's all said and done and you're six feet under or a pile of ashes or whatever way you prefer, your family prefers to be stored or recycled, your body that is. Because science believes in life after death too. They just choose to believe there isn't one, which is a belief. Because they can't prove that there isn't, only that they can't measure that there is. But they can't prove it. And they can't prove the origins of the universe either. But don't get me wrong. There's a lot we can learn in trying to figure out the origins of the universe. In fact, we're learning so much so fast that it's taking time just to go through all of the data to figure out what the latest experiments in physics actually mean. But somewhere along the way, science and scientists have become smug and arrogant. And by making that statement, I'm not trying to stereotype all scientists, but that is the prevailing thing. Scientists want to convince us all that there is no God and that you're not significant, but you are significant. If you're watching this YouTube video right now, first of all, thank you for watching. But I want you to know something. I love science and I've studied science my entire life. I keep up with the latest journals, but science has it wrong. You're not an accident. You are important and you are very significant and you have a purpose. Again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching this video. If you would click the like button and subscribe, that would be great. And if you share this video, you can help us grow. We're trying to reach 100 subscribers by Christmas. It's a pretty big goal, but we think we can do it with your help. Again, thanks for watching.